Hello everyone, I hope this video finds you well despite the new challenges that we are currently facing right now. My name is Maria Sanchez and I'm a first year grad student at DePaul University. So I wanted to talk about wellness techniques and their different techniques that have helped me a lot with reducing anxiety and stress. So kind of quickly wanted to talk about balance, so finding balance in your life, um, the signs of burnout, time management, the SMART goals formula, stress management, and self-care. So let's get started. So quickly, I wanted to talk about what is balance. Balance is different for everyone. And it's balancing between various roles at one place. For example, I find myself with a various numerous hats. I play a student, a daughter, a teacher, a classmate, a friend, and just like you, you're also wearing different hats. So how does that impact our academics? How does it impact our relationships? How does it impact us in our workplace? How do we succeed in order to find balance? We have to look at these different things in different lens. So quickly, I wanted to talk about the American Time US Survey which states that between the ages 25 and 54, an average person spends 8.8 hours at work, 7.8 hours of sleep, 2.6 hours of leisure activities, and 1.2 hours caring for others. And that also includes children. So now that we have all these, we look at this in the big picture, we have four hours to do schoolwork, four hours to do other activities that does not include all of this. So how are we able to balance this? How can we balance this in our life? So that brings me into our next question. How do we find our balance? So I was able to put these into two different categories. We have the internal and then the external. For the internal, we have the mind, the heart, and the health. So the internal is just what's going inside. So for example, for the heart, we have giving love versus receiving love. And then for the external, it's just going outside of us. So it's work social and family. So for example, for family, it's fulfilling our responsibilities within the family versus creating those healthy boundaries in our family. Both of them, both the internal and then the external are very positive. But if one is taken over the extreme, it can be a negative experience. But also others prioritize one over the other. But it's also important to keep in mind to just check on yourself and see if both of these are balanced. And another thing to keep in mind is that when we overwork and when we overthink, we can experience burnout. And so what does that look like? Now that we're familiar with the term balance, we're going to move on to the signs of burnout. We may not think about it at all, that we're experiencing burnout, or we may not experience it at all, but it's very important to kind of take this seriously and get ourselves educated about the signs of burnout. So first off, we have the uh, alienation from work-related activities. So that means viewing work as incredibly stressful, that you start to emotionally distance yourself from your own work. Moving on to physical symptoms, so that includes headaches, stomach aches, muscle pain, and insomnia. You may not experience all of them at the same time, but you can experience one or another. And then we have emotional exhaustion, which is the lack of energy to finish your work. And usually that comes with feeling drained and tired. And then we have the reduced performance, which is affecting our everyday activities and it's having a hard time kind of concentrating with our work and we kind of start losing that lack of creativity when we work. So it's important to not take this lightly. It's something very serious, although it's not diagnosable psychological disorder. It's important to kind of get ourselves educated because we may not know that maybe our neighbor or our parents or our child is experiencing burnout. So now we're going to move on to um, time management, which can help with burnout and kind of also with balancing as well. 
Moving on with time management. So time management is the process of planning and controlling how much time you spend on a specific activity. And usually, if not all the time, if we practice good time management, it helps lower our stress and it leads to career success. So I made this diagram, which you don't necessarily have to do everything in this diagram, or you could do one over the other, or just kind of practice one at a time. It will help with time management. So the first one is planning um, out a schedule. So that's planning out ahead. So kind of making um, every day a kind of clear idea of what you need to do and what needs to be done. It also helps with, for example, if you have a doctor's appointment, kind of planning ahead of, oh, what am I going to do in the morning before my doctor's appointment? What can I do after? The next one kind of ties with planning out um, your schedule, which is a to-do list. So that kind of gives you a rundown of what needs to be done that day or what needs to be done at the end of the week. If you physically have a copy or if you can physically write it, it helps a lot tremendously with kind of reminding yourself of what needs to be done. So the next one is setting realistic goals and deadlines, which is achievable and measurable. So there's a method called the SMART method, which I will talk about in the next slide. And it's kind of like a you a specific, it's measurable, it's attainable, it's relevant and timely. So kind of setting yourself with realistic things to do and realistic deadlines so not giving yourself um too much of a burnout when it comes to giving yourself deadlines now we have prioritized so kind of prioritizing yourself what's important and what's urgent so for example if you look on your everyday tasks so what's important what needs to be done right away versus what can you do later so kind of Figuring those things out can help you a lot with time management. Uh, taking breaks. Always, always, always take a break because you need time to kind of clear your head and refresh yourself. And that could be either going for a nap or going for a short walk or meditating. So kind of giving yourself a little break. And then my last one is organizing yourself. So kind of having that long-term management. So that's writing deadlines for projects or thinking about what to dedicate yourself in specific tasks or that can also be kind of having a planner. It's all about finding what works best for you. What do you find yourself more comfortable when it comes to organizing? Moving on with the SMART goals formula. It's a personal favorite of mine. I have used it in the past and I am currently using it right now, and these goals help you a lot with what you want your future to look like, what do you want success to look like, and if you sit down and kind of write them down, what are the different goals that you need in order to achieve that success that you want in your life, it's kind of, if you want to set them today and just aim your activities in the right direction. So starting with the S, which is being specific. So clearly define that goal. Know exactly what you're, what do you want to accomplish? And that could be simple as being happy. All right, we have set the goal of being happy. Now what do we need to do next? So now measurable. So it's defining that goal in measurable terms. So how will you know when that goal has met, has been met? The next one, which is achievable. So choose very realistic goals and that are manageable. So make sure your goal is not too far to reach, but far enough to be challenging. So don't say, I hope to be rich. Okay, is that achievable? Yes, but make it more realistic. Um, the next one is relevant. So kind of link the goal to something important to you. So what, in, what inspires you? So kind of making sure that this goal is important to you and it will help you a lot with success and something that you will be proud of five years from now and timely so when do you want your goal to be met so kind of setting that deadline so defining a time frame during you want during the time you want to achieve this goal so 
that could be going on a walk. So by the end of this week, I want to make sure that I have gone on a walk two times. So by doing these um, five steps, it's going to help you a lot with pursuing your goals and it gives you more passion. So not coming, not becoming afraid to kind of set these goals and setting small goals can help a lot with bigger goals. So this is a personal favorite of mine and I hope you give it a try and let me know if it works. So the next one we will be talking about is called stress management. So what is stress management? So these are just different techniques and programs which are intended to help um, kind of effectively relieve stress and kind of take different positive actions to minimize those effects. So I just wanted to quickly kind of point out that we will all experience stress some point in our lives and that's totally okay. And it's also important to kind of get ourselves and acknowledge that there are different strategies that we can do to kind of minimize that stress. So I put these into two different categories. So we have the short-term strategies. So it's something that you can perform anywhere and it takes just literally minutes, sometimes even seconds, and it provides immediate relief. So first off, we have uh, muscle relaxation, which is kind of we practice kind of relaxing each muscle group so it can start from the forehead and moving onto your toes. And that's up to personal preference how you want to do that. The next one is kind of taking a walk. It's something, it's a stress reliever and it takes minutes. Uh, taking a walk can actually help you with the change of scenery. So if you've been at, in your office all day, kind of going outside and just kind of take in the fresh air, it just really helps a lot with kind of helping out our minds. Um, the next one is called breathing techniques. So we have morning breathing, rolling breathing, four, seven, eight breathing, and we have flower breathing. So I kind of put a picture of what flower breathing is, and it's one of my favorite techniques. I use it all the time with the kids, and they love it, and we love kind of taking our time to check on ourselves and kind of give ourselves a mental health check. And the next one is meditation which you can probably find a YouTube video just about anywhere and just can take up to three to five minutes or even longer. There's different videos that you can try and it really helps a lot with kind of grounding ourselves with what we're doing and relaxing our mind and kind of practice mindfulness, which is super important as well. And then the next one is guided imagery. So for that one, it's kind of taking a short vacation in your mind. So kind of close your eyes and just picture what's your happy place. What makes you happy? Um, that could be listening to the waves, smelling the ocean, feeling the warmth and of the sand underneath you. So it can just be anywhere, even smelling your mom's home-cooked meal. So what makes you happy? So those are some of the techniques that I have found very helpful. So now the next one is called the long-term strategy. So it's finding different techniques and kind of making it into a habit and practicing them weekly, if not every day. They don't necessarily have to happen every day, but just kind of incorporate it to your everyday lifestyle. So now the first one is exercise. Physical activity is so important with managing stress as well as improves mental health. And there are different ways to kind of do this. It's kind of getting a gym membership, uh, taking a class, going outside every morning before going to work and kind of incorporate that into your life. Um, the next one is yoga, just like exercise, getting a yoga membership and practicing these physical movements of meditation. It's very light exercise and kind of control your breathing and it's just really great with um, stress relief. The next one is balanced diet. You may not think about it, but it's so important to know what you're eating. So reaching for those high fat sugar foods can just provide that temporary relief, but how will it look long-term? So kind of choosing a healthier diet can help tremendously with stress overall. The next one is called the leisure activities. So these are just taking time out of your day if not, just kind of focus maybe one day um, every week and kind of 
find things that make you happy. So a hobby that could be going out and doing photography, taking a singing class, going out for a movie, um, playing games, just having a little extra time for fun is very important. And it helps you a lot with relieving stress. And then the next one is scheduling time for sleep. You may not think about it, but sleep is so important. When you don't have enough sleep, it just, it's not helpful and it causes you a lot of stress because you're not getting enough, um, you're not letting your uh, body rest or your mind rest. So kind of finding a time that works best for you. So what time am I going to bed? Is it eight o'clock? Um, what time do I need to get up? So getting those eight full hours of sleep is very important. And the last and final technique is self-care. I think we're all pretty familiar with the term self-care, but it's also important to note that self-care looks different for everyone. So I ask you this question. Do you take care of yourself? And if so, in what ways do you take care of yourself? So I kind of provided a different um, techniques that has helped me. So the first one is saying no to things. Simple as if someone asks you, do you want to go out tonight? It's okay to say no. Don't feel forced to do something if you know it's going to not make you happy. Um, staying home. Sometimes cuddling in bed is what you need and it's what makes you happy. Asking for help so not being afraid to reach out to others to ask uh, if you need anything. Um, setting boundaries with yourself. And that can also be setting boundaries with your friends, your family members, your coworkers. A long time. You may not think about it, but kind of being alone with your own thoughts kind of helps a lot with realizing what makes you happy. The next one is reading a book, going outside, listening to music, taking a nap, and even a bath. So I kind of provided um, a picture of a, a self-care. And it, like I said, it looks different for everyone. So just kind of if you want to, it helps a lot if you kind of write out what makes you happy and then incorporate that in your life or incorporate that once a day or even twice a week. So kind of getting yourself familiarized with what makes you happy. It's very important to take care of our mental and emotional and physical health. And overall, it improves and reduces anxiety, stress, and it's also key to helping us with the relationship that we have with ourselves because what matters the most is yourself. So taking care of yourself is very important. So before ending this voiceover, I kind of wanted to add this last slide and it has different mental health quotes that I like to read every morning or before the start of a busy week. One of my personal favorite ones, it's the, it's okay to make mistakes, to have bad days, to be less than perfect, to do what's best for you and to be yourself. And I really hope that this video brought you knowledge to these different techniques that you can incorporate in your life. And just kind of remind yourself that you only have one mind, you only have one body. So it's important to kind of take care of ourselves. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this video and until next time.